Good morning. Uh, this morning, we are, we'll be having a vacation Bible school. It's the first for during the service. So the children will follow. If you'll follow the procession, they'll go down to the undercroft. And the children will be staying through the end of communion. So parents, kick back, relax, and worship this morning. <laughs> and now, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The Lord accomplishes great things that surprise the human heart. It is often through unexpected means that God's glory is revealed to the people. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit, and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I the low tree, I dry up the green tree, and make the dry tree flourish. I the Lord have spoken, I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. On the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp for you have made me glad in your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. The righteousness shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the hearts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no fault. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, and he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. I hope your summer is going well and you're enjoying it, hopefully getting some much-needed downtime. I don't know about you, but when I think of summer, I think about vacations. Everybody likes a good summer vacation, right? I mean, it's that time of year. Well, for us, the Hackett family, we just got back from our vacation. We went to the beach with my side of the family, 19 of us. <sighs> we went down to Florida, Indian Shores, which is not too far from Tampa, and stayed a week in a big house on the beach and had a great time. And so one of those days while we were down in Florida, we undertook a pilgrimage that many of you might have taken, especially if you have young children. The pilgrimage that some of you may love, the pilgrimage that some of you may dread, that's right Disney World. <laughs> now, it's not my idea of great fun spending hundreds of dollars to be chased around by a giant rat. <laughs> I've also heard it called the Tragic Kingdom. But for my boys, well, they had been so excited about going there for the past few months. In fact, on the way down to Florida, they were even chanting, Disney World, Disney World, Disney World. We didn't go there right away. We went to the beach house first, spent a few days, and then we were going to go in the middle of the week. Now, my kids have watched a few Disney movies and seen Mickey Mouse's Clubhouse, but they aren't, and we aren't, huge Disney fans, so I don't know how they know what a big deal it is. I guess from other people, kids in their school, it's just in our culture. And I've tried to describe what Disney World was, but it's hard to describe something to someone when they don't know what it is you're talking about. Sort of like describing the ocean to someone who has never seen it, right? But still, deep down in their gut, they knew that Disney World was this awesome place. So we're driving down there, I guess about hour number nine on the big journey. And as we're on the outskirts of Tampa on the highway heading to the beach, we pass a putt-putt. It's not a real big putt-putt, just a normal size one, something you probably see in Pigeon Forge. Had the fake dinosaurs, the windmills, lots of palm trees, the beach pirate ship. You know what I'm talking about, the normal putt-putt stuff. But as we pass it, my middle son Tom, with big incredulous eyes, he asks, Is that Disney World? <laughs> 
He was amazed by this little putt-putt place, and he thought that could be the great Disney World. And so I'm thinking, why not? <laughs> yes, son. Yes, that is Disney World. Talk about saving some serious bucks. But no, of course, we did take them to Disney. But don't think, <laughs> I wasn't thinking, man, I could have just gone there. And then I hear the gospel today, and I hear Jesus trying to explain the kingdom of God. Explaining something so wonderful, it is hard for people to grasp, like Disney World, to a five-year-old who has never been. You see, in today's gospel, Jesus gives us a couple of parables, trying to show us something about the kingdom of God. With what can we compare the kingdom of God? So when you hear that phrase, kingdom of God, where do you go with that? What do you do with that? See, the disciples were always getting confused about the kingdom of God. When they heard kingdom of God, they thought an earthly kingdom, that Jesus would come down and establish dominion in the earth. And I think we get confused, too, when we hear kingdom of God, not the same way. When we hear it, we sort of think of heaven, don't we? Something that is far removed after we die. So I think a better translation that might be more helpful is for us to think of it as the reign of God, the reign of God, something that can be experienced right here, right now in each of our lives. So with the first parable, we get the mysteriousness of this reign of God and that God is active in this world. And then the second parable is the mustard seed, the old mustard seed. Apparently they used to wear necklaces of this back in the 60s. I did not know that. But the mustard seed, it's usually interpreted to mean that something small can grow into something big and wonderful, which is definitely true and always good to hear. But there's something more to this mustard seed than meets the eye. See, the mustard shrub grows uncontrollably. It tends to take over where it is not wanted. It tends to attract birds within cultivated areas where they are not particularly desired either. It's a pungent shrub that could take over your garden. It is probably something you would want only in small doses, trying to control it, if you could. That is what the reign of God is like, says Jesus. If you let God into your life, something mysterious and wild has the potential to happen. You see, in these parables, there is always something more than meets the eye, something that Jesus tells us. They're, they're like riddles, these parables, stories that Jesus uses to get through to us. That's why I can never get my head around why some people take the Bible literally when Jesus just spoke in parables. <laughs> I mean, listen to what Mark says again. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables. Jesus thought that stories are the best way to communicate truth. Stories. Stories are important. So what about your story? Have you ever shared your story? Have you ever listened to someone else's story? Have you ever thought that maybe God is in your story? See, our tradition states that Christ is in each one of us. God is present in every single person, and I'm convinced that when you hear other stories, you have the opportunity to experience the presence of God right here, right now. So that day when we did go to Disney World, we went with my parents, my brother's family, and my sister's family, which includes some of my nieces and nephews. And so what I remember about Disney as a little kid were the super long lines, right? Like you'd wait in line for an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. And now they've done some neat things about that. You have this fast pass so you can go like on three rides right away. And they've got little activities even in the lines for the little kids so they don't get too bored. But still, there is a lot of waiting in line at Disney. And as a kid, it seems to take forever. But now I'm older, I realize that is part of the genius of Disney World. See, what do you do with your family when you're standing in line for a long time? Well, you talk to each other. <laughs> what a novel idea. 
You talk to your family and reconnect. Get to know them better, what they're doing now. You see how much people have grown and where their passions are. You hear their stories. I talked to my nieces and nephews, caught up with my sister, joked around with my brother, shared a memory of Disney World with my dad when we went 30 years ago that I hadn't thought about in that long. And it wasn't just our family. Most every other group of people around were talking and sharing, usually laughing. Well, the whole thing took me by surprise. Sometimes it takes a line to make you slow down and wait and almost force you into talking to each other. Now, I'm not going to lie, the little kids wanted to get on to the next ride, always on to the next great thing, and I realized that's how we all usually live, right? We're always wanting to get to the next big thing in our lives, the next great vacation, the next great night out on the town, the next big game. Can LeBron do it tonight? The next big holiday, the next big promotion, whatever it is for you. We're always looking for that next big thing. But that day at Disney World, the rides weren't all that important to me. But standing in line and talking with my family, that was where it was at. The stories all the stories. And yeah, Space Mountain is still cool, and my boys absolutely love the place, but for me, it came back to those stories. See, when we share our stories, we reveal ourselves to each other. And when we listen to other people's stories, we share in their story, we connect. And that is where we find God's presence. Everybody has a story, and in it, you will find God. God in me, God in you, God in each person, connecting to each other. God's kingdom is in us. It is in us. And when you begin to see God in each person, in each person's story, you see that the reign of God is sort of like that mustard seed. It's uncontrollable. It spreads like wildflower. It's all around us, all the time. You start to see God acting everywhere in every life. So this week, maybe you'll be standing in line somewhere. Maybe strike up a conversation and listen to someone's story. Or maybe take some time and think about your own story. Listen to Mark. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them. From one moment to the next, God is present. Whether you're standing in line waiting for what seems like forever, or riding on a roller coaster, hanging on for dear life, laughing hysterically, God is present. The kingdom of God is like you. The kingdom of God is like you. Amen.
Our prayers today, we will use Form 6, beginning on page 392. <laughs> In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our friends, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation. sorrow or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless and the needy. For the peace and unity of the churches of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop, our own bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. Special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Daylon Brown, William Chalmers, Betty Curtis, Tony DeValentine, Ed Faulkner, Peter Keyes, Judy Cox, Martha Spencer Lee, Teddy Peabody, the Reverend Jim Sanders, Teresa Schmidt, Francis Tyler, Nancy Staple. Bob Strickland, John Walker, Pat Taylor Walker, Sister Brewer, Alex Dempster, Marvel Fine, the Reverend Martha Horn. Are there others to be named? Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Thanks today, especially for the work and ministry of St. John's Cookie Cruise, for the work and ministry of Trinity Church in Gatlinburg, for the flowers in the chapel given to the glory of God and in honor of children and families, and for the flowers in the church given in memory of Lieutenant Colonel James Grayson McCoy, Mr. and Mrs. W. Gilbert Atkinson, and Mr. and Mrs. John Cardell McCoy. Are there other thanksgivings? We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Remembering today, Holy Carmichael. We continue offering prayers also for all serving our country in the military, especially those deployed in Afghanistan and Syria. As we pray for the civilians of Afghanistan and for all victims of war everywhere. We also pray for the peoples of the Holy Land as we pray for all people who are being persecuted and displaced because of their faith. We remember American soldiers who died this week, including Christy K. Davis, a civilian servant. Lord, let your kindness be upon them. Also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful. In your passion, forgive us our sins. Now and in our death, that you may shine in the light of our death. And so follow us by your Spirit, that we may be able to serve you in the gifts of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. <laughs> well, good morning. We welcome all of you who are guests with us today. Please, on the way out, see one of our ushers who have a gift for you today. 
And we also welcome, assisting us musically, um, Teresa Pepin is here today uh, with us on the organ. So please give her a nice warm welcome as well. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
Thanksgiving continues on page 361. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, all my 
Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food.
And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. go this week. Have a great week. Hope you'll make plans to join us next Sunday for Father's Day here. And speaking of fathers, there was a glowing and beaming father in the front row who watched his daughter Zoe Carruthers for her first day as an acolyte. Congrats to Zoe and to you, William. And now go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs>